Join us today as we change the engine's disc brake, change the spaghetti in the head, pan for gold in the oil, and break a couple things along the way. Two thousand three Mazda Protege five manual. What do we say about this car? Well, first off, it was bought for a purpose, and that purpose was Taylor's bachelor party. Now we have a film about this trip that was filmed earlier this year in April, but unfortunately, I haven't had time to edit that video. It is a massive, massive video. We're probably going to do a three-part series, but just know this: this car was bought to be used and disposed, but ended up winning the hearts of all of us over. So, she stays and gets the treatment. AKA, which means getting fixed and continuing its life as an off-road vehicle. AKA, mom said we have Subaru WRX wagon at home. Okay, while we're working in this area, it would be remiss of us to not replace the uh, harmonic balancer slash crank pulley, whatever we want to call it, because this thing is pretty shot. They are usually bonded with rubber, and over time, that starts to separate and the metal pieces, um, I guess the center and then the outer, kind of start to separate and they start to vibrate and uh, wobble and it's just, uh, it's not good for anything. So we're going to go ahead and replace that with a replacement one I got here. So first off, we've got to remove the belts both from the alternator and the power steering. So we're gonna start by doing that. The easiest way to do that is to move the cruise control system out of the way. It's only a couple bolts and it really opens up the access to get those belts off. Unfortunately, forgot to hit record on that, but it came off drama free. Just used the impact and then just pried it off a little bit. It's very, very easy. Interestingly enough, it doesn't look as bad as I thought on the uh, rubber part. It's starting to crack, so I'm glad we are replacing it, but a little bit weirder is the fact that it's all scored on the back. It almost has like a, like a disc brake-like appearance on the back. Very interesting. Just from rubbing up against the timing case, I guess. Which is, shouldn't be happening. That might mean that it's out of round, so good thing we're replacing it. With new crank pulley installed, we can go ahead and reassemble everything as it was. that on and the belt's back on as well too. Let's see, uh, make sure this thing fires up still. It's back together. With that easy but critical task taken care of, we can focus on the next item. We're going to go ahead and replace the valve cover gasket because this motor is covered in oil from head to toe. If you've never replaced a leaky valve cover gasket, it's actually extremely simple and very cheap. You can do it with simple hand tools in your own driveway. Some carts are easier than others, but they're all generally pretty straightforward. This coil pack didn't want to comply and came out in a couple pieces. It can be put back together pretty easily, but the boot was being stubborn and I had to pull it out. Here 
here, I'm just making sure I didn't drop anything into this critical area of the motor. Long-term wrenches and gearheads will know that there's a specific pattern that you need to torque these down to. Generally, it's from the outside inwards, but consult the manual if you're doing this job yourself. With the top side leak from the head being done, it was time to focus on the oil pan and oil pan gasket. Getting access to the last oil pan bolt required dropping the pipe that connects the cat to the mid pipe. Cleaning the oil pickup tube is going to be a really great idea while we're down here. Remove any kind of sludge, debris, metal shavings. This is critical because this is what essentially oils the whole engine. So we want to make sure it's clean and free. It's a good idea to pay attention what's in your oil when you do an oil change. Those big chunks are actually just gasket material, but there's plenty of metal shavings in there indicative of this motor's wear and tear. It's a bit higher mileage and I just hope that it's not bearing material. It's interesting that Mazda chose to go a bit old school and use a cork gasket here. They work really well actually, but once they deteriorate and kind of crust over, they're extremely hard to remove. Looks like this one is probably the original one from the factory. Once 
once the surface is clean, we're actually going to apply a very thin coating of RTV and spread it out with our finger. That'll help ensure that the gasket is held in place as we offer it up to the motor, and it also adds just a bit more sealant protection. With the car refilled with oil, we can successfully cross one more job off the list. There's still a lot to go, but this car has made a ton of progress in the time. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next build episode.